Today, we shall be focusing on the literature during the period of the Pallavas that is between say circa 600 to 900 AD and focusing our temporal space uh, between 600 to 900 and the geographical locale will be focused mainly on the lower Dravida Desha that is the present Tamil Nadu. Already it is very well known that the Pallava reign, it introduced many new features uh, regarding uh, government, then uh, economy, uh, certain aspects of uh, the religion also uh, changed uh, large, uh, to, to a large extent. And this was also reflected when we focus on the cultural aspects, the cultural achievements during this period, particularly in the architecture and literature. Now, in this period, regarding the literature, already we know that in Tamil Nadu, in the Tamil countries, in the Tamil speaking region, literature had a long history, which first started with the Sangam anthologies, which was subsequently followed by the epic period, which coincided with the Kalabhra interregnum that saw the sudden disappearance of all the three ruling kings, that is the Cholas, Cheras and Pandyas. And this period saw the efflorescence of several epics like the Silapadi Garam and Mani Meghalai. Also there were didactic literatures being produced in a profuse number, which was contributed to a large extent by the heterodox sects members like the Buddhists, Jains and the Ajivikas. Following this period, following the epic period, we find the period dominated by the Pallavas in the political field, there was the efflorescence of a different type of literature which had the lion's share being uh, contributed by the devotional literature. And also there were significant secular literatures being contributed even by some of the kings like King Mahendravarman. Also, we find that in the epic period already, the phrases, the imageries had a tremendous influence of Sanskrit and this was continued or taken forward in some of the aspects like King Mahendravarman composing the Sanskrit farce that is Matta Vilasa Praharsanam and a significant portion of the royal eulogy that we find in the inscriptions that also was being composed in Sanskrit. But other than this, a large part almost the lion's share of the total literary composition or contribution of this period almost say for 300 years was being contributed by the 
religious and devotional literature, which is uh, enumerated by the Vaishnavite anthology, which is known as the Nala Ira Divya Pravandham, the sacred 400 uh, Pravandha compositions, as well as the Tirumurai, uh, which comprised of 12 sections or books and this was the Shaivite kernel of the Shaivite canon. And this was totally uh, composed, if not totally, but a large pa part was composed during the Pallava period. that Pallava period saw the emergence of a very strong sectarian movement which is eulogized or which is denoted by the term Bhakti movement in the religious field. And this religious fervent uh, religious movement, this results in the creation of a huge literature which is known as the Bhakti literature as noted by the Shaivite canon Tirumurai and the Vaishnavite canon Nalaira Divya Pravandham. Tirumurai, it comprises of 12 books, of which the first seven, which is known as the Tevaram, was composed by, or this is the collection of the compositions of three foremost Shaivite saint poets, who were known as the Nayanars or the Nayanmars, that is Sambandhar, Appar and Sundarar. After this uh, Tevaram, that is the seven uh, compositions, the eighth composition is of Manika Vasagar, who is another foremost um, saint poet, uh, who composed two separate books, which is uh, comprised or which has been anthologized in this eighth uh, book or uh, section. Then the ninth book, it comprises of some of the compositions of the minor saint poets. Tenth is uh, Tirumular's uh, composition, which is very different in its structure as well as the intent. The eleventh book, it comprises of some of the compositions of some minor uh, poets and poetess, of which one of the most significant is Karaikal Ammayar and also the compositions of the anthologizer that is Nambi under Nambi that also has been included in this uh, 11th book. Now Nambi under Nambi's time it seems to be falls a bit later than the after the um, end of the Pallava period or the time is obviously a very uh, issue of uh, debate. Uh, apart from this, Piriya Puranam composed by Chekkalar, it is, uh, it falls aside the Pallava period, but the large part, particularly the compositions of the four main uh, saint poets, Sundarar, Appar, uh, Manika Vasagar, they all fall within the Pallava period.
Apart from this, apart from the Shaivite canon, we also have the Vaishnavite canon that is the Nala Ira Divya Pramandam, where among the 14 poets, 12 were the Alvars, that is the Vaishnavite saint poets, of which the first three, Poihai, Pudam and Pe, according to the tradition, they fall way back in the pre-Christian era, but it seems that they belonged to the earliest part of the Pallava rule. Then we have the compositions of Peri Alvar, a very important saint poet, and his foster daughter Andal. And finally, we have another very important composer that is Nammalvar. Taking all these uh, compositions of the uh, 12 uh, saint poets, we find again most of them they belonged to this period that is the Pallava period between 600 to 900 and they were part of this fervent religious movement that was going on particularly in the Tamil speaking countries. As I have already referred, Mahindra Varman, who had another metonym that is Vichitra Chitta, that is curious minded person, he along with his contributions in uh, the political as well as other fields, he was a very important literary figure as well, who composed the Sanskrit farce. Matta Vilasa Prahasanam, which pokes fun to or um, lampoons persons like uh, the Kapalikas and Kalamukhas, who were the members of unorthodox Shaivite sects, along with the Buddhists and the Jain. Mahindra Varman himself was a con converted uh, person. Earlier, he belonged to the Jain uh, sect or Jain group and then he was converted, people say that under the influence of Appar or Tirunavukarasar. And in this composition, we find that he lampoons the activities, a kind of uh, um, uh, hedonistic uh, activities of the Kapalikas and Kalamukhas as well as the pseudo uh, renun uh, renunciating uh, approaches of the Buddhists and the Jains. The setting is uh, in Kanchi which was the Pallava capital and there some of the main uh, protagonists, the main protagonist is uh, Satya Shoma, who was, uh, who is a Kapalik mendicant and his woman Devi Shoma, who are very fond of wine and they go from liquor shop to another liquor shop asking for arms, that is the liquor, which they take in the begging bowl, which is in the shape of a uh, human skull because they belong to the Kapalika uh, sect. Now, uh, as it happens that uh, Satya Shoma in an inebriated uh, condition suddenly finds that his begging bowl has been lost and then he uh, thinks that it has been stolen by Nagashena who is a Buddhist monk. but. Uh, Despite being a Buddhist monk, 
he also casts covetous eye on both liquor and woman that is Devi Shoma and uh, thinks that uh, whether why in Buddhism there is a kind of prohibition uh, regarding uh, wine as well as woman. Now, this uh, dispute between uh, Satyashom and Devi Shom, uh, Satyashom and Nagasena ultimately breaks into a brawl which was uh, in which uh, Satyashoma uh, accuses uh, Nagasen as a kind of habitual thief who not only takes, steals the physical belongings or the material belongings, but also plagiarizes because he uh, takes or Buddhism uh, takes without referring the original source largely the ideas largely from the Mahabharata and Vedanta. When this dispute was taking place, Pashupat, who belongs to another uh, unorthodox Shaivite sect, he uh, comes um, in, in, inside the uh, or he tries to mediate in this dispute and uh, Finally, it so happens that a madman comes into the stage with the begging bowl in his hand, which ultimately shows that this uh, begging bowl was taken by a dog. In this uh, drama, Mahendra Varman not only pokes fun to all these sects who are against the Puranic Hindu religion, but he also breaks, cracks joke regarding the corruption in the government circle where he shows that the officials, they were also corrupt. Now, being a king who rules a large part of South India, cracking jokes against his own government as well as depicting the social life in a very lively manner, Matta Bilash Prahasan, it remains a very important literary composition. Along with Matta Vilasa Prahasana, he also composed several other texts, some of which has been lost forever. Now, when we look into the structural features of the devotional literature, particularly composed in Tamil, we find that these literary compositions sometimes shares or sometimes borrows some of the themes which actually belongs to the Sangam period, Sangam anthology that is the heroic poetry age. Now, uh, while composing, they have taken help of the meters particularly the Venba meter, which was the traditional meter in which the Sangam texts have been compo composed or the poems have been composed. Apart from this, themes also sometimes uh, are the same. For instance, when uh, Andal composes her poems regarding uh, or expresses her erotic, erotic love towards uh, Krishna, she uh, takes the help of the aham type of theme which was prevalent in the Sangam period. Same thing can be said about the Manika Vazagar's composition when he expresses uh, his love to Shiva in a kind of erotic tone, he also shares the theme uh, similarly like Andal from the aham texts. Now, Appar, whose earlier name was Marunikir, he belonged to a Vellala family and earlier at the beginning of his uh, career, he was a Jain monk who uh, shared the position of the uh, monastery head in a very important Jain monastery. Later, because of some divine intervention, it is said that 
he was converted, he was, uh, he reverted back to the Shaivite uh, path or sect and then he composed some uh, almost uh, 49,000 uh, couplets or uh, compositions of which only some around 3,000 has been uh, preserved in the, in his books in the Tevaram texts. Unlike Appar, Sambandar's poems is a kind of soliloquy in through which he converses with the uh, with the godhead that is shiva and in the case of uh, sundarar he uh, tries to build up a kind of familiar tone of a friend with the god uh, sundarar's uh, composition is found in the seventh book of tevaram now with uh, these uh, seven books, we also have Manika Vasagar's compositions which also comprise a very important segment of the Shaivite canon. But another very important uh, person or persona is Karaikal Amayar, the only woman saint among the 63 saint poets of the Shaivite uh, canon. Karaikal Amayar, who it is said that uh, possibly she was the earliest among the Shaivite Nayanars, she it is said that danced along with the goblins who uh, are associates of Shiva in the Thiruvalangadu cremation ground. She employs a new type of uh, structure using the Kali meter in which even some of the earlier uh, Sangam poems have been composed, then he, uh, then she ties it up into a ki kind of garland, into a kind of connected theme. This type of invention or this type of uh, form uh, formula that uh, she builds up is known as Kattalai Kaliturai and through which she actually binds the themes so that the later it is uh, it uh, composes or it comprises the kernel on which the later Prabandham genre or Prabandham type of literature was later composed. Her other compositions, other than uh, those uh, belonging to this Kattalai Kaliturai, she uh, uses the Venba meter and again there is an invention that is uh, it ends in the um, fashion which is uh, in Tamil poetics known as Andadi where the last lines of the earlier couplet uh, is the same like the uh, following uh, uh, the first few uh, segments of the next couplet and in this manner a uh, kind of garland was being tied up. These type of new themes she introduced which had enormous influence in the later period which continued for say another thousand years. In this manner we find that in the Pallava period there was a significant contribution, literary contribution which had enormous impact on the literary field not only in the Tamil literature but also in Sanskrit as well. Mm -hmm.